Welcome back to ESL One Katowice. <laughs> Guys, you've been absolutely fantastic for your patience. Thanks for waiting. We are ready to get underway. So, without further ado, it's over to the man who always can, Machine. Awesome, and of course I can't do it alone. Of course I have my entire desk with me. And uh, I think it's time straight away, we're gonna jump straight into the maps. We already touched on uh, the majority of what we were expecting to see, but let's kind of get a refresher. Of course, there's probably plenty of people that have joined us. And I'm gonna start on my right, Casper. What are we expecting to see? What are we in, maybe expect, expecting to be taken away? And perhaps why? We're expecting to see an IP remove either Cache, Nuke, or the two, like two of yeah. those three. We're expecting CLG to probably remove overpass, I could imagine, and maybe a couple as well. I'm not sure about that one, but I think they're going to remove overpass. And that leaves like Inferno, ca no, not Cash. What could be? It could be Inferno Mirage something, maybe. I don't know about you, Hiko. I haven't heard any of the new maps yet. What about you, Hiko? I agree somewhat with Gideon. I think uh, typically American teams don't play Mirage. Um, and they, I would expect uh, CLG not to play Cobblestone either. So I would think that it's going to be up to Nip. I would expect Nip to drop D2 in Inferno as well. So we'll see like Overpass, Cash, and whatever the last map is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what about you, Sponge? What do you see these teams maybe fighting for? We'll start with Nip. Uh, like I said before, I think they're confident to play any map. Um, but I think uh, it's up to CLG, and I think it, they will maybe risk Cobble in the map pool. I would. That's what I would have done. Um, I think uh, hopefully for them, Cache and Nuke will be left, but it's probably not going to be the case. I have just heard in my ear, we've obviously been un unable to see the vetoes, and I'm about to blow what you just said out of the water and say oh, we are going to be playing Mirage in this best of one. Yeah, Anders just shakes his head. You can see the map there. and uh, I mean, Hiko, I'm going to go straight to you because you just said CLG will not want to play Mirage. Look where we are. Uh, Mirage is one of those more tactical maps. You need a lot more executes. Trying to do stuff on the fly usually doesn't work against European teams. Uh, my, my old team, Cloud9, ran into a, a brick wall almost when we tried to play Mirage against and, and play very loose. So hopefully CLG practice a lot of Mirage. Hopefully they have like the, the right executes. They know all the smokes. And I'm yeah. sure they, they probably do. So it's not that bad of a map. Uh, we saw, we've seen Alu actually be, being able to shut down the, the middle window connector area with, a, with his op. So it's, I think it's going to be a lot on PTR uh, to try to, to counter, his op, counter op Alu. And if PTR actually does have like, a great match and he's able to get those early picks, I can see CLG winning. Okay, well, you've already given your kind of perhaps uh, predictions. It's time for the official predictions. And Casper, maybe who you're seeing and, uh, and maybe why. Especially after coming out on Mirage, I think that NIP is going to go through. It seems like Elo has been insanely strong on this map online, so that's a good thing for him to come here and feel confident on a map that he's like secure, really feeling secure on. So I'm going to go with NIP and I'm going to go 16 to 9. Okay, and I mean, Hiko, you said you can see CLG taking this. Does that mean when we're, it's going pen to paper right now, are you going to support your uh, American Eagle? I have to. Oh, okay. I'll give it, I'll give it to CLG 16 14. 
16-14. So expecting a close one. And of course, turn to my left, Sponge going into this one. Are you going to support the EU or are you waving a little American flag? I, I want to support uh, CLG, but I'm going to have to go with uh, NIP. Okay. Probably going to win. Uh, can you put a number on it? Yeah, probably 16-8. 16-8. Yeah, Confidence in Canadians. NIP. And Anders? Uh, well, um, I don't know. I, I would really like to see CLG like come up with something really, really interesting. Um, I think, new, uh, sorry, Mirage actually meant that NIP has been avoiding a lot. So I think the fact that Alu's on here has probably made a really big difference with the team, uh, which is which is interesting. They've been playing it more and, and have some success with it. But uh, yeah, I, I'm going to double down on NIP and 1611 is my going to be my, my bet for it. Okay, no surprise. Just Hiko on CLG. It's time for your casters, though. It's D-Man and Pansy. Take it away, you two. Thank you very much, Alex and the guys, and thanks for filling that time. We are underway, so let's get straight in the game. Of course, joining me is indeed Pansy for this one. NIP Hello. are coming into this one as the top seed. They are starting out as the T side up against Counter Logic Gaming, and it's immediately a bit of a B play. Yeah, and it's going to be Tarek on that receiving end if they commit for this one. He's been playing brilliantly thus far in the tournament. Let's see if he does it again, but Peter catches a glimpse of them in mid, and it might change things up a little bit as Freiburg edging up that little bit of a catwalk towards short, but at the moment, no blood spilt, but yet PTR catches a glimpse again, and Forrest already making his way through. Exist finds Tarek. That means B is vulnerable, and I wonder if they're going to make a push, but FNS in a beautiful spot. Catches a glimpse of Exist. He goes down. FNS quickly, though. Dealt with by Get Right, and as PTR makes his way to the site, it looks too little too late as Get Right is racking them up as well, down to two now for both. Cutler needs that support though. Hayes is coming around short. He's going to join him, but they know exactly where Cutler is. Alu's going to try and get some tags on towards him. Hayes is moving the real long way around. They're delaying him. Bomb does go down. So talk, t clock is ticking is the word I'm after. Freiburg's head may well be vulnerable. Hayes doesn't quite land the shot. They're going to try and rush through. They do catch a glimpse on him. Just peeking at the right time. That bomb is ever... So slowly going down, Cutler has been dropped. He's, he's the last well. man standing, has got a kit, does get one, but he's quickly revenged. And that will be NAP picking up the first round on the T side. Yeah, and a very quick update, just in case you don't know. In the other game going on at the moment, TSM are currently 14 to 14 against Cloud9 on Nuke. So another big game happening at the same time. But back to this one, as we said, NAP, good start there, pretty solid overall. But look at what the Americans are doing. Living up to the kind of name that we put to them, some of the, the styles they play, going quite heavy into round two, playing two scouts, a deagle, a couple of five sevens. And they're looking to get aggressive, but so far, to not really much avail. Yeah, well, they ran headlong into NIP in that palace. Cutler might be able to get this one, though. Exist is low. Definitely a couple of attacks, but they are completely smoked out. We're going to see Freiburg. Forrest jumping across, does get tagged up on the stairs, but not taken down. Hayes replies, gets in there with that deagle. He's going to try and get a second one. But you're actually looking a little fragile right now. Just the five hit points on Freiburg, ten on Forrest, three on Exist. This is doable for CLG. And Alu is making a swift rotate through spawn. He has to get there. He's the only player who isn't a one-shot for anyone up right now. But Exist dealt with Cutler and Forrest pushes for PTR and is just hazed. He's gone and NIP not taking this lightly though. Those smokes, those executes, they went for that. It's one of those moments you think they just switched to pistols from those scouts. They're trying to land those shots, but it wasn't quite enough. And also, uh, I'll give you another score update, guys, because there is obviously a, a fairly sizable Polish crowd here. Virtus Pro did win their first matchup, 16-5. Dominant performance from them on overpass. And a good spread of uh, Franks, exactly what they needed for that first game. Nobody was the weakling. Are they? I think they're stacking out A here, actually, CLG. So they could maybe get something away from this. I'm not sure. Four players are waiting, and it looks like another A execute coming out from NIP. However, I don't know how well this is going to go, but PTR at least did get down. Get right, but Forrest comes in with that big Mac 10, ripping them apart. And sadly, now FNS and Cutler left with too much to do. And he's uh, pretty much locked out. Forrest there. running for that knife there. You can <laughs> you know see he what he wanted there. Well, FNS is the last man standing. He is the shot caller for his team. It was a change around after the qualifiers here just three weeks ago, of course, where Peter was calling the shots. They changed the moment they got back to America, changed things around. He's now just going to hold on in connector. Exist should find him. Tries a couple of wall bangs. And that's going to be a clean pickup for NIP. Yeah, brilliant start for them. Just getting themselves warmed up on the big stage as well. And... Showing a fair bit of their A executes, but I don't think there's you know, an easy counter to NIP just doing a full-on A. 
And as you can see, the crowd's starting to get a little louder. We've heard the words of Verdus Pro being spoken around, so people seem to get a little excited for that for some reason. And I just want a quick update live. Cloud9 just beat TSM on Nuke. So that is a wow. massive result for yeah. those. And Shazam, 26 to 18. However, back in this one, first gun round, important. Look at Cutler. This is insane play. Goes straight up mid, gets Freiburg. That's a one for one exchange. It gives them the information they needed, though. They saw them all up mid. Let's see whether. CLG reply, and they get in position. Get right is awaiting. You know, there was a lot of talk on the desk about that lurker position. This is one of the match, maps where that lurker position really can pay off. Hayes, though, is not rotating along with the rest of the team. This is a good delayed cover from CLG. You can see Finesse just on 5% health. Hello, well, that target is about to find its home. He's just off the side. You can see, of course, with that X-ray, that will force him back away from that one. He manages to get one, though. So that's a hello down, so the AWP is dropped. And they're going to catch on towards Forrest. He's got the information. The rest of the team rotating. They're already in kitchen. They're ready for this one. But where's Exist up to? He's got himself in a really good spot there, actually. But still, Peter does find him. Forrest takes down FNS, who's holding on to it. So now Tarek 1v2. It's going to be a tough one, but the bomb is at least loose for now. Spot known. Tarek's going to go for it. He's going to try and get it, and he does get right the last man. Just six health, all he's got left on him. As we try and flick across, Tarek knows he's on short. The flash comes out. Remember, he does have the bomb, so it's not planted yet. This is a straight up one on one. Nine seconds on the clock. Get right has to find this one, but Tarek will respond. That's the round they needed. The first one on the board for CT side. And what a round as well. First gun round. That's such a big impact towards it. And sadly, forget right, he was on 6 HP, so so few options. You'd have to just catch Tarek out somehow. But Tarek held strong. And that man, as we pointed out earlier on, big performance in his earlier game. Looking to maybe follow it through here. So good start for these guys. And we and see what the T-side bring to this one. Now they are just starting to feel the pressure, maybe, on what CLG can bring. But Peter, the aggression from these American teams is just second to none. But they've misread the situation. You can see he's sat in underpass, however... It is going to be a smoke out from that ramp. That's going to go straight into the jungle. They've got Get Right ready and waiting. He's going to rush straight up that mid side while the rest of the team port draw their attention to the ramp. You can see Cutler just waiting around these stairs. No smoke just yet. But Freiburg, it's already in play to get that bomb down. And Get Right still yet to push the mid. Just trying to catch one on the flank, do that lurking roll that people are questioning these days. Still. Oh, stunner from <laughs> Freiburg. Just plucking the head off of Tarek's shoulders. Now Freiburg just waiting to get that flash out a little too long as Cutler now moves in towards it. Get right, lurks in. He spots out Peter, gets one, looks for the follow-up. Sprays down, denied by Cutler. And now 2v1. FNS. I don't think this one's going to work out, sadly. It's just around the corner, not going to get an NIP. 4-1 to one now. Just had a fantastic performance, actually. If you were to look at game one, who was the top fragger existing? I'll see you. Player, obviously, the, the shot caller, the second shot caller of the day, actually. Happy had some fantastic performances this morning. If you managed to catch those matches up against Titan earlier in the day and LGB to go through, of course, NIP, they just need to pick up this one, as do CLG, to make it through to the quarterfinals. There's a lot of games still to play. This is our fifth match of the day so far, with another three to follow. Again, right. It's a big push, straight into B. This is a risk, actually. CLG went for that stack. It's not worked out. They tried to stack out A site, but you can already see NIP. They're in the B site. Yeah, they knew what was up in IP straight away, working down mid and getting pretty much the bomb down right as we speak. Forrest just holding off the door so no one can make a bit of a play as Exist pushes forward. And we're seeing a confident Exist going for us, taking down FNS, and just the three remain. And once again, CLG buying up, not massively, but enough to do damage, but sadly not going to find it here. Tarek's hoping that he can <laughs> get something. Draws him out, tops a plant pot. He does manage to get him down with the P250. Won't get a second, needs to go for the reload. And Forrest comes through, making expensive, tosses the gun away. Cutler will get till caught out. Freiburg gets him down. And a clean, clean round. 5-1 now for NIP. Make it seven, five, which is five. I was about to say six. I thought the bomb was going to go off. Fantastic start for them, and as Rightly pointed out by the stats man right there. They have been in all four majors so far. Can they make it the fifth? 
And can they go one better and get their second major on the board? Yeah, this is one of their least played maps overall. Um, even the new additions take priority over it. However, we're seeing a very quick push coming out of NIP here, looking to do damage, but maybe on the other side, the very egoed up CT team trying to do any form of damage, but denying on all fronts until right then, Tarek and Hayes pick up something, but not enough as Hayes does at least get himself here. Not going to do much with it. And well, you've got to say right now, NIP looking pretty much on point here. It looked almost shaky after that first gun round. You thought maybe there was a little something building, but NIP looking so strong. Yeah, and we talked about, obviously, they were on about the, the desk how NOP can get a little disrespectful, a little overly aggressive once they feel they have the better of a team. And I think that's what we're starting to see. It was confident A ramp pushes without any smokes going out, just without any flashes, just pushing straight up there. They know they're up against a fully bought up CLG this time around, though. But that grenade on Peter is going to make him second guess whatever he does in this match. Such a shame to take him down so early on for CLG. And now Exist starting to lurk his way forward. Going to smoke up, maybe allow him to push up towards B if they fancy. The bomb is still top mid. Nans of Alu. And the smokes do come out. It looks like they are trying to at least play in towards B. I'm not sure if they're committing towards it. As we're seeing Hazed also joining Peter in this very low amount of HP. Geralt did take him down. And at the moment, it's just NIP picking apart CLG. They're not even really pushing anywhere just yet. They're just taking over the map slowly but surely. So Tarek waiting. Peter finally finds Forrest. Still a 4v3, so Cutler's patience may just pay off, as it does seem so. NIP are working towards A. He peeks out, does find one towards Exist. Not going to get the follow-up on Alu. Desperately tries for it. But in the meantime, everyone else went down. And NIP just getting that perfect pacing. Yep. Freiburg on your screens there. He is clocking up the kills. You can see 241 in the majors course, played through all four of those, got to the finals. Kind of helps. It helps your kill count when you get to those finals, but <laughs> as it stands, 7-1 up. NIP looking a dominant T-side so far on Mirage, and CLG yet to really put in a solid defense. They're struggling, honestly, money-wise, to just get anything going. Every time they get those rifles, NIP just rush them down. And, of course, you can see they're back to that Deagle for Hazed and just a couple of P250s, but that is your lot. No armor, but Finesse does come around, tries to get his hands on that AK. It was a risk worth taking, but it didn't quite work out for them. Tarry's going to try and follow through as well. Not going to happen. Allo clears that one down, and this should be should be a clean pickup for Freiburg in the connector. Just one man stands. It is Cutler with that Deagle up against three members of NIP. And that is going to be Freiburg collecting his fourth of the round. A clean, clean stand padding, padding performance. I can't even get my words out. It, it really is. Uh, there's not much more to say about how all these guys are playing. And everyone's playing very well. Ali's been a little quiet. But then again, you've got Exist stepping up, which is something we hadn't seen for not a while. But he's not the guy who's normally at the top of the scoreboard and is perfectly fine with his role. But him and Freiburg certainly finding form very early on here. And now into the 10th round. We're finally seeing this double up and oh my god, Peter. These guys are going crazy for this aggression in mid. And waiting for this Freiburg on the other end. Not going to get the shot connecting and Peter backing away now. And while all this happens, it looks like B is starting to be questioned here a little, but exist through underpass. Peter had backed away. Tarek was holding the angle over on the B site, which we did see NIP heading towards, but they have wisely stepped away. Peter doesn't land the frag though. That's two that have slipped away from him. Both Freiburg and Exist just slipping into that crosshair, not quite getting him down. And these are things that when you look back at the demos, the replays after tournaments, you're going to be kicking yourself for, of course. We can see it with the X-Ray. They can't. FNS does manage to land a good couple of shots onto Freiburg, taking him down to 20 health. They know that he's pushing through, but Tarek, forced back on bench, will get taken down. Freiburg is going to have Finesse running straight into him any second. He's not really looking that right direction. They will spin around. Finesse did manage to find Forrest. Cutler gets himself one, and he's now down to a two-on-two. Two. This is actually winnable for CLG this time around. See if they can control themselves in the situation. Hazed getting down exists a big impact, but can Alu step up to the plate? 1v2. <laughs> Waiting for it, Peter denying on every front. And finally, another round on the board for CLG. A well needed one at that. Yeah, this is, of course, the first major performance appearance for CLG. And the question is can they get out of groups? They know they've been living in the shadow of Cloud9. 
from the American scene. Cloud9 always seen as the number one team. If CLG were to get anything off NIP here or just to make it out of the group stage, get to them quarterfinals, they would immediately put themselves there. Of course, we've already seen Cloud9 beating TSM, so they're through to the winner's bracket. They're going to be facing Virtus Pro later on this main stage, but right now, CLG have themselves a hell of a task ahead of them. They've got themselves one round on the board. Now they've bought. Let's see if they can start collecting those rounds. It's what you need to do on this side, but already eight T sides for NIP is a very, very solid start. Here come the set smokes. It's going to cover out CT. And COG have got themselves a problem here on the A side. They certainly do, and that problem is advancing and fast. Peter, though, holds his own, but has to back as Gerai does find Tarek. Peter finally gets Alu, and almost look mid-air to me, but at the moment, T-side are firmly in towards A now. Might be retake time as the smokes once again get put down. We've still got Cutler and FNS to back up Peter, who's trying to find someone around this smoke. He knows they're close. Cautious, and there's that aggressive push we were maybe waiting on. Exist and Forest picking up two, leaving just FNS, and there's no options left here for him. Yeah, he's had to back away. Just waiting for Peter to make that shot. As soon as they heard that booming orb, they could just rush him down. And that will be the ninth round on the board for NIP. They did have to revert back to those set plays on the A side. It wasn't quite as chaotic, I think it's safe to say, or organized chaos maybe that they've been running for the last few rounds, just running through, getting those kills. Forrest doing a bit of a railing run, trying to find down FNS. And there, of course, well, that, that's not quite get right. It's the teddy bear that's on his screen. There he is. He has, of course, placed in the top 10 of the last three majors. And well, also voted the number one uh, player on HLTV, of course, for 2014. And, well, putting in yet another steady performance, as you would always expect. Yes, yeah, steady performance, but we are seeing that double orb coming out actually for NIP now. And it was something that was said on the desk earlier. I'll get back to that as Cutler went for that aggressive play, but followed up by FNS. They actually get down, get right for a one for one. It's not too bad, I guess, giving FNS the chance with that AK now hazed with the M4. So. Something could be made of this. Peter chomping at the bit to try and push in. Catch him up when they're doing the smokes. He almost had Freiburg. Just oh. trying to find his position on the wall to get that set smoke out. <laughs> Didn't quite work out, and he's tacked out to five health. Alu covering his back now. And that's, that's definitely slowed things down for NIP. They were all ready to make that set play on A site, but a couple of little pistol rushes has given Counter Logic game and a couple of rifles you can see. Finesse holding close, is going to have to throw out that molly. Not quite burning himself out, but that will slow things down. Hazed is ready. Everybody from CLG is in the right place, but not at the right time. And Alu will open things up. Tarek, the last man standing, has that 5 seven. will get himself two, gets himself a third. Can't quite get the hat trick. And Forrest closes out, but that got costly for NIP. And it was looking pretty good for CLG then. With the molly, it bought time for, I think it was Hayes who was rotating round from B, came and joined him eventually, but that was a little too close for comfort with that uh, beautiful work at the end. But it's, yeah, regardless of how close the round may get, then the scoreline is still the same. It's two to 10. CLG on the CT side, you've got to be wanting more than this. And well, in we go. It's, it's a mixed bag of uh, guns here coming out for CLG. You want a, a scout? A couple of pharmacies, it's not great. And as much as you'd like to say, yeah, they came back from 12-3 against... It was nuke. Uh, yeah, exactly. It was on nuke. That's, that's the big thing. This is Mirage. They are 10-2 down. The best they can hope for right now is 10-5, and that is right now is looking unlikely. And that is not a good score on the CT side. You want to be looking at minimum of nine rounds at the moment. They are really struggling to find their groove. Forrest does open things up. That AWP on the van. Peter does respond. It was a good scout shot straight through into Apps. Cutler is waiting, but Exist already has his number. He's got it. He can see the leg, and that's all he needed to take him down. And Molly will bounce through into jungle. Nobody there. Peter's instead going to rotate all the way around the CT side. Tarek does manage to find himself one. Freiburg there. Allo quickly with the revenge frag, and the B site is now in the hands of NIP. If they want to move on through for the bomb plan, I don't even think they need it. It's going to be Hayes going down. Peter, the last man standing, running in with a scout. Will find the bomb carrier, but unfortunately, Get Right is up close and personal. 
And that will be 11-2 now to NIP. Seems that the one-sided games seem to come towards uh, <laughs> the games I've carted very recently. It's a bit dangerous here for CLG after such a good start in their first game, just not seeming to be able to find any sort of form, any sort of momentum building in this, because it just gets ripped to shreds instantly. Look at this the scoreboard. Everyone's starting to form so well. So get right being not necessarily down the bottom, but sitting fairly you know, central towards it and now working towards the top. It's a terrifying sight when every single player of uh, NIP is starting to find that real comfort. However, Alu did get taken down very low, trying to peek out of the apartments earlier on, on towards A, and that's, I can imagine, Peter doing that bit of damage with the scout. Now, who obviously dispatched of Forest just one round ago, he can do some uh, damage with this thing, so can't be taken too lightly. Well, while they're 11-2 up, they have had a couple of very close experiences against these Ecos of CLG. This time around, the set smokes will go out. Stairs, jungle, everything covered off. It's going to force CLG to go up close. They have got those pistols. Get right with the molly. It's going to burn out dark. And the rest of NIP move on in. This is a full coverage bomb oh. plant. Easily done. And this should be NIP's round. I just want to point out the faith in the smokes and flashes to last them from Freiburg to Mar right in the faces of PTR. But Peter going down means there's just FNS and Tarek left in this one. 2v3. They are quite low, but I don't think there's enough in the bag for FNS. But Finally caught by Freiburg and NIP. Starting to stretch this lead beyond what I imagined. And I'd hoped maybe CLG would find a couple of rounds here or there, but it's just not coming up their way. Yeah, it's just not working out. 12-2. Solid, solid T side. And you know, we heard Anders talking about how the sometimes NIP have had some ropey group stages in majors. If you think back just to the last one, the Dream Act, obviously they reached the final and lost to Envy, but if you were to look back at the group stage, it was down to a almost a couple of rounds. I think it was against Pentra, I believe it was, in the uh, group stage. And they were really close to going out of the tournament in groups. This time around, though, very much a different case. Solid, solid performance in the first map, and it seems like the second is very much going their way. 12-2 up already. One man to the good. And as soon as that smoke clears, Alu may well find himself another. As FNS just hypes and prays that that crosshair doesn't move his way. That's all he can do at this moment, with four of them standing in a terrible situation of a bye. See if maybe NIP will come towards them, and that's pretty much all they can hope for. As Forrest and Alu both running with the orb. But Exist has been constantly doing this. He found, I think it was PTR last time, in that spot right there. So you can see him checking it again. Peter being down, not going to find much, but we will start seeing NIP their options. That flash will give away the game, but it'll give FNS a chance, denied by Alu. And it's just opened up that B site. Yeah, they're straight in there. You can see Alu position himself, ready and waiting for that kitchen push. It's going to be Tarek trying to sneak around, but he smoked off as well. Freiburg will be in his face in a moment. Tarek, if he pushes through, he's going to find himself in a very sticky situation. Freiburg's actually got two making their way through. Did he hear that footstep? I'm pretty sure he did. Heard the boost, hit, heard the step. That's all he needed. And Hayes, the last man, just around the side. Cutler comes on through. Ali was staring at him, didn't quite land the shot. Forrest will from short. Freiburg was made to pay the price, but what a performance. 13-2, solid, solid first half for them on the T side, and that is an uphill struggle for CLG, no doubt about it. They did it once, I guess you could say they could do it again, but we already discussed yeah. the map just doesn't <laughs> quite allow for maybe that sort of comeback every single day. But then again, you know, these, these guys like to surprise and maybe there's, there's something they could do. I, I don't want to write them off just yet, but two rounds is so little at this sort of point. I can tell you, of course, guys, obviously every Sunday here in the crowd and everybody at home watching, we will be having a bit of a change around in the schedule. Next up after this will be Virtus Pro versus Cloud9. It seems that the... Loser this match up against the winner will be played off stage. Trying to get that schedule caught up a little bit. Obviously, we had delays pre this match, but right now, CLG really in a difficult, difficult, sticky situation. You can see, obviously, clear conversation going on there. I would listen in, but I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to spoil it for them. I don't, don't want to let them keep that private as their halftime talks. Obviously, a lot of things, tensions running high, of course, but. You know, they had a fantastic performance to get here. <laughs> and you guys in the crowd watching this one. A lot of Virtus Pro shirts, as you would expect. I don't think that's much of a surprise, is it? 
of all the teams, it seems that they are quite the favourites. And so far, I think we discussed a little bit off stream how well everyone in Virtus Pro has been playing. Yeah. At the moment, it wasn't just one or two players finding form um, in the initial game. It was across the board. So a dangerous, dangerous sign for other teams if all of Virtus Pro are finding this very early. Yeah, I mean, surprise, surprise. Virtus Pro turn up in Poland and put on a show. We'll see how it works out. They've got a lot of games to go if they want to equal last year's performance. Of course, the team they were up against is Ninjas in Pajamas, who themselves are looking very strong so far against CLG here on Mirage, of course. 13-2 the score, which got a little match pause as uh, I believe Forrest is rejoining the server, so he'll be back in, in a moment. And we'll be getting back underway. And really, this pistol round is going to be everything for CLG, because if they were to lose this, you're pretty much looking at 16-2, and that's not a score anybody wants to have. Yeah, it's... <laughs> It has to start now. There's no other way of looking at it. And he's, it, it, sh there's no way they can truly turn it afterwards. So I, I'm just looking to see what these guys can pull out. The, the, the early aggression I liked, I love the way they pushed up mid, you know, quite readily willing to challenge, but it just really didn't give them much. And it was always someone ready to get the avenging kill for an IP. You never got one for free is, is how it seemed, whether it be you took down Exist, who was somehow lurking in Connect when there's still three players on A and no one decided to look. You know, there was always someone ready and willing to just pick up where they left off. And it just gave NIP the firm advantage so consistently throughout that. Uh, I, I, I don't think that CLG can even play to that standard at the moment. No doubt about it. NIP in control of this one. Looks like the pause has been just about sorted out. Well, actually, it's not like the uh, freeze time has run out. Everybody's back in the game. And... We will get underway for the second half of this map. 13-2 currently to NIP if you just joined us. Very much a dominant, dominant performance as you would expect by NIP. One of the major winners just about, about what, eight months ago now, back in ESL 1 Cologne. And it's good to see so many of you joining in for this one. It is going to be a setup, and actually Tarek is just the man to try and distract the whole of NAP. He's literally running through, pistol firing, manages to get, get right down while the rest of the team, they sell themselves oh. a fake, but Freiburg was ready. That was absolutely beautiful. He finds a follower onto PTR. Now two left around the side gets tagged. He tries to dance around the bullets, but it's a 3v2. NIP well aware of where CLG are now aiming towards. Starting to begin retake on towards Science Bomb finally down. Alu through the apartments. Forest being pressured by two. Hayes gets him down and now Alu creeping in round the back. Can he actually pick him up? No, he's not killed them. He had the lineup. He finally takes down one. Exist follows it. And that could be the nail in the coffin for CLG. Yeah, that was the round that CLG really could have done with, but you saw how close it got. This was just on hate health there. That was very, very nearly CLG's round, but smiles all around, or certainly from Alu, at least. <laughs> I think Exist was like, you should have probably had that. I was like, it's, it's all right, I didn't cover it, I didn't cover it, don't worry. <laughs> I knew you got this, I knew you got this all along, but 14-2 is the score, NIP now. Gonna have those SMGs, maybe even a scout, we'll see in a moment. In fact, oh, they've got double M4 in there, that's just how confident they are. And why not? It seems to be working. The Tech Nines are dangerous. We saw Olaf earlier giving us a lesson in that one, but I don't think anyone here needs to be taught. The AK with Tarek yet to be put to use, but Forrest does find Peter in mid, oh, follows oh, 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 up oh. towards Cutler. This looks like an absolute demolition until Hayes finds maybe a little bit of a silver lining. Tarek finds one, Hayes on to get right, and we're in a 3v2 finally. Maybe, just maybe, CLG can do this. Well, the NIP are completely split here. You can see one over on short, Freiburg knows. I think he heard the footsteps there going across underpass, but actually FNS is maybe selling the flight and sneaking back, but Exist is ready. They're going to come straight through the smoke. They manages to find Tarek. Couple more shots, doesn't quite land. Has to go for the reload. Backs away. Hayes will run him down. They're going to get the bomb plans in here, and it's all on Freiburg now. Really, CLG absolutely need this round to keep themselves in the game. It would go to match point if Freiburg were to close this one out. On two, comes upstairs, he's tagged out already, they know where he is, Hayes gets him down. Whew. They needed that round and, well, NIP, I think, Maxi may well be kicking themselves because they invested fully in that one. And now, COG, can they get a couple of rounds on the board there? Can they get a bit of momentum going? Because, by God, they need it. Yeah, indeed. Uh, the <laughs> 
if, if it's such a long path, it's almost impossible to think they could walk it. But still, we've seen them do something similar. They Neon had the exact scoreline um, in previous games, so already waiting and looking at the CT side. They have very little, but Gerrite goes for an early pick up to be denied and then followed up by Freiburg going down. FNS and Hayes doing really good work in mid, actually. Well, Alu snuck through that smoke. They have re-smoked it, though. Cutler will keep him away, so it's going to have to be a while longer. Let's see if it pays off, though, because the are taking a while here, and by the time that smoke clears, Alu is in a great position to find FNS just below him. And, of course, with Exist pushing up behind, he's actually going to try and sneak into Palace, but instead it may well be a short play. And it is only going to be Forrest ready and waiting. He's got the CZ. He could make it work. Doesn't try. Oh, Cutler was so close to going down. That's the one he needed. The rest of the team do come in. And now Alu and Exist, they are going to have to come from behind in a 4v2 situation. Alu's constantly yeah. in his position. I d <laughs> he is not really willing for that one. But he's got to say, CLG starting to feel, you know, maybe a little bit more comfortable here. But already Tarek does take down Alu. So at least taking the gun away once again from NIP. And Exist looking for a couple of exits. Here. Slowly, Peter will edge towards him. Cautiously does it, checking just about slips away from Exist. Comes back for more, but dangerous place to be uh, peeking that CZ and Exist left to reload. I don't know how he's still alive. And the bomb will go off. Tarek saves his, waiting on the other side. And Exist does manage to save it up. Yeah, focus face from Tarek there. Was ready and waiting <laughs> for it, but didn't work out for him. It's 14-4. NIP still with a gigantic lead, but CLG are they on the comeback trail? It is only two rounds so far on the T side. Picked up, so it's a long, long way to go so far. But AKs versus pistols, we it could be seeing another. Exactly what I was going to say. This, this should, in theory, be another one for the T side, but we've seen so many of these anti ecos being a dangerous game to play at the moment. Beautiful little Molly popped up and over Tarek. Feeling confident going in for quite the aggressive shot. Does take down Get Right, but Exist avenging, as we've seen so far. At oh. the moment, it's not looking too bad. Shoot, shooting each other in sandwich there. That's not what they need to be doing, that's for sure. But look Cut at this the positioning from Alu and Forrest. They're just waiting for a pixel, and they might actually find one. Alu is going to sneak through the smoke. Oh, almost got the pot planter. Wasn't quite enough. The support was there. Forrest still peeking, trying to get a look over that smoke. But look. Is hidden away. Forrest with that USB not going to work out for him. Just going to try and rotate, try and get something on the exit here. Now CLG will pick themselves up another round on the board. Forrest just tries it, rushes out, may actually get it. <laughs> it's having to back away, didn't want any of that. Forrest not happening though. And that will be 14 5 now. And OP still with a big lead. CLG though, they will be facing. A fully bought up NIP affair this time around. And that's the big point now. We might just see NIP with those guns finally beside them. I, I don't think we'll see maybe the mollies and such just yet, but we will at least, see, at least see the orb for Alu. So comfy buy coming in for NIP. This is the bigger test now. We're going to have the both bought up teams. We've got CLG with everything they'd want. NIP with most of what they'd want. And it looks like we're going to see a full A execute. They're stacking up CLG. Lining up for the smokes here, Peter. Hasn't gone for it just yet. And we're gonna wait for that clock to tick down. Try maybe, maybe try and draw something out. You can see, of course, that palace smoke in there exist. Covering that one off. Tarek is just the other side of that wall. Timer. Looks like it's going to be a 110 execute the way they're poised and ready. There we go. Going to rush on out there. Smokes go down. Exist is in perfect position now. As soon as he leaps around the corner, Tarek will get cleared off. And now it's down to a one-for-one one, uh, one, one for one trade, sorry. Hayes does manage to get down Alu. Get right also responding. They try and push around. Get right trying. That stairs push. Hayes does flash out. Forrest trying to get the bomb planter down, but it's just not working out for them. It's a three-on-three. Three. And I love the smokes that are slightly different from CLG. I don't think they actually smoked stairs, and they went straight for Connector, and it worked, but Freiburg does find Hayes. So now, 2v2. Forrest and Freiburg against FNS and Peter. They're going for this. The CT side are going to start heading in. FNS gets one. Peter with another massive round for CLG. Massive, and there's Hayes jeering on his team. Is that a haircut since we last saw him as well? Yeah. I can tell you, though, the loser of this match, which is 
probably not who would you want to see. But anyway, they're going to be facing Keed because Keed have taken down Hellraisers. So wow. Yeah, 16-12 <laughs> on Inferno. So the Brazilians, they're not out of the tournament just yet, but Hellraisers are, and they're one of the legends that have come through. Oh. That smoke not working. That was meant to go to window. And FNS immediately you can see him shaking angrily at that one. Yeah, uh, things like that you can't really afford. Even against just a pistol up team, you can get picked apart. However, Tarek does at least get Forrest down, so maybe one threat removed for now as Ali does patiently wait in mid. But at the moment, look at the stack. There's absolutely no one on B so far for NIP. Are they going to rush out of Connector Exist? Looks like he will, but he got the cover. Tarek there. Alu pops out, gets himself one down. Don't think he's going to get another. Does get the run and gun. Tarek goes down. And with that P250, he suddenly made COG. Wish they had landed that smoke. Finesse, though, will clean up. And making up for that mistake. It's funny, I remember actually sitting in the room here in Canavita in the Angelo just three weeks ago talking about that very smoke and they were saying, mm. there has to be an easier way of getting <laughs> that smoke in the window. And well, we just saw why. <laughs> Most certainly. Um, interestingly enough, another double AWP coming out for an IP, finally able to re-afford this one now on the CT side, but you've got to feel maybe, maybe the confidence is building. Maybe this is CLG starting to get back into it. But you feel it can all change in such an easy instance, but these guys are playing Pretty damn spot on right now. That's CLG switching up. Maybe the puzzle that be. You can see Freiburg hopping up, just trying to catch a glimpse of anyone just down the very end there. And I don't think he spotted anyone just yet. Everyone is still in place for NIP. Maybe the first little flash does come through. Tarek still doing what he does best. Trying to wait for a push. Catch anyone off guard. Peter doing just the same thing as well. Let's see what CLG's plan is down the line here, because they're not committing just yet, and they're taking quite some time. So a smoke towards short. That's FNS. I wonder if they're going to try and make Peter make a playthrough, but there's two orbs staring him down. This is going to be horrifically tough if he actually does try and cut through, but Freiburg using up his flashes. They've cut to underpass. They're not going in B. They've s have they sold the fake? That's the question. Get right, pops the flash piece towards A. He doesn't know where they're going from. He gets one, but it's too little too late. A two-point exchange comes down. Exist, turrets in on the site. Claiming one, Forrest from the back towards FNS. Now Peter and Tarek, the last two. I think this one bomb is loose. Tarek breaks through towards Exist, and now Forrest knocked out. As, oh, Peter needed that shot. And now waits. It's the tag, not the frag, as Freibo comes in, and now just Tarek 1v2. Legged him. Tarek knows where they are, but the question is he has to get the bomb down. 10 seconds ticking on the clock in a 2v1 situation. He's gone big so many times. We've all seen highlight reels of Tarek doing this, but can he do it against Ninjas in Pajamas? The major winners here in Cologne before, but no. Freiburg will get it. That is match point, and that very much well may well be NIP writing themselves into the quarterfinals for tomorrow. You've got to say, it, it was almost looking like CLG's round then. A beautiful play through mid. They sold the fake at B. But then the Forrest and Freiburg combo is pretty damn hard to get past. And once again, double orbs in practice. Forrest and Alu looking like they want those. And, well, why not? Forrest sitting in the window. Alu towards connector. It worked to this point. Seven rounds for CLG. 15 now for NIP. Still enough money, though, for CLG to get themselves a good buy going here. But this might be the fast array that we could be waiting for. It looks like they're just going to go straight in and straight into Exist. FNS already found there as Tarek peeks from Tetris. Get right moves in. It looks like a disaster for CLG. Yeah, that grenade right on point. Get right had the full angle of them. Got them caught in sandwich. Peter, the last man standing to keep CLG in this game. They will be going, ironically, through to face Keed. A team that Peter was supporting just three weeks ago stood behind them, cheering them on to reach this major. And Ninjas in pajamas. This time around, they don't make mistakes in the group stage. They don't leave it to the last minute. They are looking solid. And it was all down to that fantastic 12 through T side they had. Solid performance all round from NIP. That was brilliant as well. Confidence will be solid as a rock for these guys. Just thinking they've done the job, they've done what they needed. And that was, you can see on the faces, they're not even that ecstatic, they just look like a job done. You know what I mean? It's, it's just, we've got what we needed. We've all performed well. We've had players step up that maybe in others hadn't done so well. Exist has been outstanding in the games we've seen so far. A player who often won't get the spotlight in comparison to who's in that team 
in the first game when they faced off against Keith Stars, when 26 to 18, that is something you don't see every day, especially at this sort of caliber, and following up with another good performance in this matchup. Yeah, fantastic stuff. There's obviously COG on your screen. They will be going through to face Key. That will be happening off stage. Next up here on stage is Cloud9, who are literally to the right of us they're right now, there. ready and waiting to get on that stage. And they're going to be up against the home favorites, Virtus Pro. So they definitely have a tough task. But they took down 16 4 on TSM, who pretty much everyone had getting through to the, uh, the final match, the winner match, I should say, in Group D. Hey, I, I don't know what to make of these guys anymore. The, I, I don't say too much because they are literally four steps away. But, uh, but Cloud9. If they can overcome that sort of, you know, <laughs> scoreline, you can't put them past anything. When these guys get going, they have such a high skill ceiling. And we've said it consistently throughout this whole event, especially on the desk. The Cloud9 have a dangerous combo that can kind of go super bad or super well. And with players like Shazam playing wonderfully, like he did on Nuke, mm. that is a very good start. What I will say is, so far, all three of the number one seeds in the groups have gone through. Can Virtus Pro do the same thing? We'll find out shortly. We're going to get over towards the main stage because I can see Get Right standing by with Sean Charles. Thank you so much, D-Man. Thank you so much, Pansy. I'm here. With Get Right, how are you doing, buddy? I'm just fine, you? I'm doing really well. So talk me through that. What was that like? Well, it was kind of a stump there from us when we were a team. I, I mean, Forrest and Adam played like excellent, amazing. I mean, you can add so many words to how good they played there on TF. So it was not really much for me personally to do or the rest. So we were just happy to win the game. Doesn't matter what the score is. So. Now, how's the rest of your day been? This is the first time that we've had you up here on the stage. You've brought your massive following as normal. What's it been like? <sighs> kind of relaxing. It's been a little bit of delays and, uh, well, it's been a good time at least. Good time. Now, today is done. You're firmly in tomorrow. What's the rest of the day look like for you? For tomorrow or for today? <laughs> for tonight. Uh, well, we want to eat. We haven't eaten since like 12 or something. So we're really hungry, every one of us. So it's going to be eating, relaxing, looking forward to tomorrow. Looking forward to tomorrow, eating, relaxing, sounds, sounds like a good time. Thank you so much, congratulations. And for now, we'll go over to Machine. Thanks very much, Sean. What a game from NIP, really just showing us that they are not a team to be doubted. And of course, you know, every single time, every single major, they get to that grand final and they seem to be taking the first steps towards doing so. We'll start over with you, Casper. And do you feel like that was NIP really just demonstrating that they're here to stay? Two factors from this one, NIP is shown to be extremely strong in this matchup and most likely CLG being a bit unlucky with this map draw, uh, with the random thing. I think they went for a gamble with removing some of the maps and they, I don't think they were hoping to end out on Mirage at least. So that's the thing. Other than that, Anders and I was talking about the CLG play with like taking small risks and uh, they decided to like gamble a bit in a lot of the rounds and we actually kind of had respect for that instead of just playing extremely passive on a map that they maybe don't feel comfortable comf to a pole with. Yeah, and Hiko, I saw you nodding. As soon as you went unlucky to get Mirage, you were nodding along and you perhaps want to back up that? Uh, I mean, I said before, I think Mirage is one of those maps for most American teams where yeah. you have to have a strong CT. If you don't have a strong CT, it's very hard to come back on terror side. Uh, Americans seem to be a little bit more loose, not as structured as the European teams. As I said, like, Mirage is not really one of those maps that Amer a lot of American teams like to practice really hard. So. CLG losing really you know, by a big deficit on their CT side. Um, yes, we saw you know exactly what I was saying. They, they made a lot of those you know gamble stacks. They made a lot of those like mid round plays to actually all head towards the bomb site. But you know their T side actually wasn't strong enough to to break through uh, the, the rest of NIP. Right. Um, so I mean, obviously it's a little bit weird crediting the, uh, the the team that ends up losing. But I think when you're the underdog team, you actually. The worst thing of watching is an underdog team that goes into playing a matchup and thinking, we'll do our standard setup and just hope that on this particular day we're somehow better than the team that obviously is the better team. 
Um, and I, I think CLG should definitely have, uh, get some credit for, for trying to do what they did. Uh, two specific rounds that come to mind was the fourth one, where the first time when they actually buy, and then the follow-up round, the next buy round that they have. Both those rounds were super aggressive. They pushed up middle, they pushed underpass uh, to try and get like into lower and uh, see if they can get over towards the B-bomb site. On the CT side as well, I think that's a really clear indication that they came into that match thinking either we, that if we push and we try and really like take it to NIP, and if it works, it'll work and we can actually win. And if it doesn't, you see the result, and they completely get destroyed. Um, which, I mean, which seems like it's a little bit silly, but actually, if it had worked, it could have been a really interesting match. Uh, I think CLG did the right thing. It just, you know, they're just playing a really good team. And Sponge, uh, we were talking before, and you just said that was just a really strong T side from NIP. And could you maybe shed some light on perhaps why was it just NIP being better off in these one v ones, which of course we saw a lot of, but was there any more depth to it? I think there's a lot of factors as to why they had such a strong T-side. Obviously, more experience on the map and uh, not being a strong map for the Americans. Uh, that's a, a huge factor. Uh, but no, they just were rolling with it. Once it started, it just kept going and CLG couldn't put a stop to it. That's the, that's the thing. When you have the dominance uh, on the T-side, you can change your strats up really easily and the counter have to respect you. And that's what happened. Yeah, well, I mean, well, there's, there's certainly a lot of respect. Of course, you have to remember that, of course, CLG are not out of the, uh, out of the woods yet. They're not out of the tournament yet, as they're going to go on to play Keed Stars uh, later on today. But it's time to highlight the match that's coming up next. Virtus Pro up against Cloud9. It's going to be huge. The Americans battling with the home side Virtus Pro. It's going to be coming up after the break, and we've got so much to talk about to dig our teeth into this one. But before we do, it's time to go to a very short break, and we we'll hope to see you guys after it to see Virtus Pro in action on the main stage.